Hello and welcome to my reflection for June 2021. When I first started planning what I was going to say, I believed that the constraints of the COVID pandemic would be behind us by now. But perhaps appropriately, one of the Psalms set for the 21st of June, Psalm 33, talks of the importance of waiting. So I'm going to read the Psalm in full. It's very beautiful and then reflect on the nature of waiting in a Christian context. Psalm 33. Sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise him. Praise the Lord with the harp. Make music to him on the ten stringed lyre. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully and shout for joy. For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, their starry host by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea into jars. He puts the deep into storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the people of the world revere him. For he spoke and it came to be. He commanded, and it stood firm. The Lord foils the plans of the nations. He thwarts the purposes of the peoples, but the plans of the Lord stand firm forever, the purposes of his heart through all generations. Blessed is the name, the nation, whose God is the Lord, the people he chose for his inheritance. From heaven, the Lord looks down and sees all mankind. From his dwelling place, he watches all who live on earth. He who forms the hearts of all, who considers everything they do. No king is saved by the size of his army. No warrior escapes by his great strength. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance. Despite all its great strength, it cannot save. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in his unfailing love, to deliver them from death and keep them alive in famine. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. We may well be feeling at this moment that the Lord has foiled the plans of the nations and has thwarted the purposes of the peoples. But the psalmist doesn't question or complain about God's unfathomable purposes, nor his all-powerfulness. To the contrary, the psalm acknowledges that all humanity depends entirely on his help and protection. To this end, we must wait in hope, trusting in God and his unfailing love. The Hebrew word for waiting, kava, means to look for eagerly, actively. And the biblical concept of hope is not just a vague optimism, but carries a sense of certainty. So the idea of spending our lives waiting becomes a very different proposition for the sort, from the sort of passive waiting we might do, say, in a doctor's waiting room or a bus queue. I think the sort of waiting the psalm refers to is more of a state of being ready, being alert, poised, listening for the command. Rather like the parable of the ten bridesmaids in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25. Five were wise in their waiting and five were foolish and unprepared and fell asleep at the crucial moment. Today, waiting can be hard for a lot of people. Our culture favours speedy results, instant gratification. Waiting can be frustrating. And yet, if we put our energy into listening for God's commands, being ready to respond to him, waiting can take on huge significance. The Anglican poet priest R.S. Thomas wrote about this in his poem, Kneeling. Moments of great calm, kneeling before an altar of wood, in a stone church in summer, waiting for the God to speak. 
the air a staircase for silence, the sun's light ringing me as though I acted a great role, and the audiences still, all that close throng of spirits waiting as I for the message. Prompt me, God, but not yet. When I speak, though it be you who speak through me, something is lost. The meaning is in the waiting. Active waiting becomes then a state of being rather than doing, of anticipating the future, yet embracing the present. Its value transforms the moment, enables us to be still, to feel nurtured, to be present in God's presence. So relearning the skill of waiting is valuable as a way of life, a way to connect and feel close to God. So let us pray. Lord, it can be hard for us to wait. And now, as we look forward to relaxing some of the COVID restrictions, we find ourselves waiting. Waiting for good news, waiting in fear, frustration, or sorrow. Please help us to use this waiting time to be present to you, to be alert for your voice speaking to us, calming us, encouraging us. Powerful creator, redeemer, friend, we know your plans and purposes for us are for our good. And yet we rush around driven by deadlines and our own desires. Help us to slow down, to wait for your guidance, your saving grace, trusting in your unfailing love. Loving Father, we thank you for your help and your protection. You give us hope in our waiting and peace in our resting. May we always be aware of your presence with us and do your will with joy in our hearts. Amen. And we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And I'd like to finish with a blessing written by the poet John O'Donoghue. O oh Lord our God, may we live this day compassionate of heart, clear in word, gracious in awareness, courageous in thought, and generous in love. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest on us today and always. Amen.